Sunshine. You are now tuned in to the real Coach JB Slap It Podcast. It's the last Last chance for me. Will I make it? Will I take it to the top? We gon' see. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. Will I make it? Will I take it to the top? We gon' see. It's the last chance for you. What up? What up? Episode 18. The real coach JB here with my main man Spree. What's happening? Uh, on the Slap Dick Podcast, man. We got a special guest. Uh, I'm going to introduce here in one second, man. You know, I always start the show off with a quote of the day. Uh, I'm just going to use one of mine, man, um, and let everybody out there know, man, every single day is an interview. I don't give a fuck where you at, what you do, your job title. Uh, I don't care if you're a player at Walmart in line. Bill Gates might be behind your ass, and you sagging your drawers, showing your ass, calling females bitches, doing all this shit. Every day is an interview, and somebody's always watching you. And when 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 you're from the football world like myself and Spree and our guest, um, we say I and the sky don't lie. It's the same thing. Somebody's always watching us. Coach, player, CEO, fuck Donald Trump. It don't fucking matter. Every day is an interview, and uh, regardless of your job title, so. But, man, man, we're going right to a guest today, man, a special guest, good friend of mine, man. He's a real cat. Uh, <clears throat> his name is Travis Johnson, a.k.a. Trap. He's in the house. Give it up. What's happening, guys? Trav, what up, man? <clears throat> appreciate you coming hey, on, brother. What's going on? Yeah, JB, really. appreciate y'all having me. Yes, sir. No doubt, man, no doubt, man. Uh, I'll introduce you a little bit, Trav, and then if you could like, let everybody know what you're kind of doing now. I'll, tra- everybody out there, so you guys know, Trav has played at uh, Sherman Oaks, Notre Dame, out here in Southern California. He's an L.A. native like myself. Um, went to Florida State, played for the great Bobby Bowden, uh, was a uh, USA Today All-American Went on to de- went on from there and was a first round draft pick in 2005 by the by the uh, Houston Texans. Also played for the San Diego Chargers and uh, and it's a privilege to have him on. And uh, what, what's going on now, Trav? What you got going now, man? Let everybody know. Man, shoot, just uh, you know, really just grinding, man. Just uh, out here doing radio, TV, you know, uh, working for the Texans. But uh, man, just you know, just just relaxing, bro. That's it. You yeah. know, just trying, you know, just trying to be. Just trying to be uh be around and be with my kids and and you know really just start trying to keep my face out there. No doubt, as much as my body can't be out there, trying to keep my face <laughs> out there. So Texas trying to keep me as busy as possible. You know, trying to you know help me with my help me with everything. You know what I mean? No like doubt. like Marshawn said, keep my kicking right, keep my mental okay. and, and keep my body right. You know? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, man. Uh, wise words from. Uh, from a cat that a lot of motherfuckers look at like he's too hood to talk, you know. Um, people don't understand the, the, the dialect. They they understand the, the the intent, but they don't understand the the, the words because we from a little different than most cats watching, I guess. But you know, that exactly. Uh, man, I know we got me and Spree got a daughter. Man, we raised through college, and uh, I know you had one man, and she had an unfortunate little haps. How's she doing, man? She good? Oh man, she good, man. You know my oldest daughter. You know I got three girls, man. My yeah. oldest daughter now fourteen years old, fresh from high school. But no, she's good, man. Everything is, you know, she's recovered well. And, you know, uh, and she still has some physical issues, but her brain is fully recovered. So man, you know, that's the only thing that matters to me, yeah, really. Yeah. Is you know, so you know, it's, it's a bunch of things she can do in life. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, man, my kids are good, bro. And I know that hit hard, man, after after this unfortunate shit with Kobe, man. That's, oh, yeah, that's man. Shit, that just, man, it's hitting different out here, man. I I'll mean, tell you. Being, being, a, being an L.A. kid, man, it just it, it just hit different as far as, you know, when you see, when, when basically, you know, Kobe was a rookie by freshman in high school. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then, then to, to, to really grow up, with, you know, with him in, in for the last 20 years and, and basically, you know, uh, from the time what I guess it was twenty years ago, whatever I have to do the math. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, he been in he been in our lives. You know yeah, what I mean? And, yeah. and being a LA up. kid, being a yeah, we saw him grow up. We grew up with him. You know, and then being so close in age, I think. And then when you talk about you know his love for his children and his love for you know love for his wife, I think that was such a big a, such a big part of the game. It's just I couldn't imagine being in that situation. And you know, I, and I'm from you know outside, but I'm, I'm from right down the street. From where the helicopters crashed. No doubt. So, you know, um, so, uh, you know, just being, you know, uh, 
just having kids, you couldn't imagine like being in one of those situations where you know you, you, your child needs that help from you, and you can't do anything for them, Man. and you can't panic because you don't want them panicking. You know, and it's you know the, the only comfort you get is that you know she probably died in the arms, or they probably died in the arms of her daddy, and she gets you know she gets to go meet her maker. You know what I'm saying? That's, no doubt. That's that's the only comfort you get in in a situation like that. And just saying, you know what? You know, now 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 you get to live in eternity. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. outside of that, man. It's just it's just it's heartbreaking because you know you know it, it, it's not it's nothing you can do. And you think you know I, I look at I look at his oldest daughter. And I feel for her because, you know, for Man. the last 13 years of her life, it's been her, you know, for really, for 10, for, for 10 of those 13 years, it was just two of them, the two mm -hmm. oldest girls. Yep. While well, he was still and playing. Yeah. To, yeah, while he was playing, it was just the two of them and their mama. You know what I mean? Kobe mm -hmm. doing, doing Kobe. And not until the last three years did Kobe have two other girls. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it is, not only does she lose her daddy, but she probably loses, this is her best friend. Yeah. This is a little girl, this, this is her sibling. This is who, I mean, yeah, we all say how Kobe got all his money. You know, these people, they probably sit up in the same room for almost his entire time. Yeah. You know, just because yep. cause they can. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's, I think, I think people uh, will, I mean, of course, I think a lot of people realize it. But you know, I really just I just pray for for, for his wife, man, because to bury a child and have to bury your husband, mm. your you know, what I mean, your 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 uh, provider, man. you know, um, and of course, I mean, she's gonna be she's gonna be well taken care of. But you still, you know, you miss you miss your partner, though. You know what I mean? Man. You miss your. They've been married. I mean, this this would have been twenty years this year coming up. Yeah, wow. and to be married to somebody for twenty years. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't imagine losing my wife right now yeah. after 13 years or 12 years, mm -hmm. and I, you know, let alone 20. You know, you're not supposed to at 40 years old. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be dying that this nah. early. Man. You're just not supposed not, to. Not, not three years, two years, three years after retirement. You know man. what I'm saying? You, you no. a legend. You're supposed to, you know, live on. And not man. when you live right. And not yeah. when you live right. You yeah. Know, a lot of guys, that, not like guys live wrong. Yeah. And and stuff happens. You're just like, oh man, that don't surprise. Me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, when you living right, doing the right things, doing yeah. right by your family, doing right by your kids. Yeah. And just and, and really just try just really just trying to be a good dad. You yeah. know what I mean? Trying to be a good dude. Yeah. And for that to happen, I think that's that's the saddest part about it is yeah. to know, you know, uh being a good dad and being you know, being the guy that say, you know what? I don't care. I'm gonna give you every opportunity. I'll make sure we make this happen, and we go by any means possible. Is you know, and this happen. I think that's the hardest part about it, man. Nah, mm -hmm. it is. It's just hitting different, dog. I was in a. Uh in uh, Tulsa the other night, man, and waiting to go to court next yesterday in fucking uh, Kansas, man. And, uh, man, I was just like, I started crying myself just sitting in the bed, dog, watching that shit. They just had ESPN. Oh, yeah. They were just running this shit, and over they had and uh, yeah. L. Duncan on ESPN with the whole, you know, yeah. girl, girl dad speech and and Carrie Champion's video. It's like, damn, everybody, you know, it's just uh, yeah. it's different, dog. It's different, man, and especially being in L.A. It I mean, it's 17 years old, man. Um he was 17, rookie. He pulls up, man. Me and my partners, we're all at the Century Club, man, in line. And uh, he pulls up in a Range Rover. We, he hadn't played a game yet. He just got drafted. He's a rookie, living in there, yeah. moved to L.A. And uh, he got in line, dog. And we just got to sh sh dap it up with him. And he was just a regular cat, man. And that's the first time we met him. And then I met him again at a Poly Pavilion at UCLA. He was probably 25 yeah. in the prime. You know, they used to practice, go up there and run. And uh, it's crazy, man. It's it's uh, it's it don't seem fair, man. You know what I'm saying? Life is no, life don't. ain't fair, but damn, this one seems different, man. It's just uh, hey, I mean, we, I mean, and especially, I mean, you got, I mean, the last twelve months, we done lost Nips, we done lost Kobe, no oh, doubt. And I think this this one hits so much harder than, than Nips. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we got, yep. you know, you got a short time you, uh, a Nip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then we didn't get to see Nip grow up like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We watched this man grow up from a teenager. Yep. He was one of us, you know what I mean? Like yep. when you listen to Jimmy Kimmel tell you know, tell the story beer of uh, of um of the beer run and for, for all the LA kids, you know, when he said Pink Dot, I'm like, dude, I remember Pink Dot because they were the only one getting cards. Hell yeah, back so in the day. So if you had a party, that, that was Grubhub. That was Grubhub before house. now. <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was everything. Yeah. It was yep. Uber Eats, it was everything. Yep. Like you could order This is the nineties. Yeah. In the 90s, from Pink Dot. You know, and I'm like, dude, this is, 
when he was telling the story, it just reminded me of yep. being at a high school party. Yep. And running out of beer, somebody <laughs> said, call Pink Dot. <laughs> and Pink Dot shows up with yeah. case of beer, Mad Dog 2020, uh, <laughs> Thunderbird, a couple of packs of oh, Kool Aid. Shit. You know what I'm saying? He just was, he just, yeah, man, he just was, times that you, you're like, dude. Those little times that you take for granted, you know, and it's just oh, like, yeah, man. how many times do we take for granted? Just the air, when you see Kobe, you're like, hey, man, it's Kobe. Or, hey, man, this is Nip. Or, hey, you know, it's anybody. Yeah. Right. And, and now, all of a sudden, you don't realize, man, you got That's why I tell people all the time. Well, I tell them now. And even before, like, man, call your brothers. Check on your brothers, man. Uh, check yeah. on your boys. Mm. And let them know, man, just, hey, man, it's okay to tell them you love them. It's yeah. okay to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that was the most beautiful thing about, especially watching Shaq and Ernie yeah. and, and them guys, man, that talk about them. It's just, you saw you saw brothers, man, showing, showing raw emotion. And I think that's one thing we got to we gotta teach these kids out. It's okay. To, it's all right to cry, man. It's all right to be emotional. Oh, yeah. It's all right to love people, man, unconditionally. You know what I mean? You ain't got to always be a thug. You ain't got to always be like, oh, I'm too hard. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 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 it's bigger than that. Cats better recognize, man, the, the <laughs> real gangsters cry, brother. Those are the ones fuckers you got to exactly. watch out for. They're the motherfuckers. We grew up with the cats that uh, I try to tell people. I said, shit, we had a cat went to school every day, wore reading glasses, uh, dicky suit, and white tee, and... Uh, it, 4.0. I saw him every day. It was never late to class and then find out this motherfucker the biggest killer right, we ever yeah, met. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're like, <laughs> yeah, Cats, be better be, you don't let the, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Don't yeah. judge a book by its cover. Yeah. So, man, I know uh, football guys, man, and I know you had me on your show after uh, Last Chance You and all that shit and we chopped it up. And, and you know, I know uh, Florida State's had a few hires and you're a prominent Florida State alum. You, you and Dion and people, yeah. people express a lot of Disconcerning, uh, you know, coaching efforts that have been going on there, man. I know you went off on Willie Taggart, and I, I agreed with you 100% because of Florida State is supposed to be Florida fucking state. USC is supposed to be USC. Uh, even Florida, you could argue Florida, Miami is supposed to be what they're supposed to be. Um, you really can argue there's really Alabama, Clemson. I mean, LSU had to run this year. I think that's over with. Um, uh, just because of the coordinators and then the quarterback, and I just think it's a special one-time shot. I love Ed and what he does, but um known him a long time. But my thing is, it's really been a two-horse race for a while, You really four, five, six yeah. years. And uh why these other schools are getting get their ass beat in recruiting blows my mind. I don't understand um how it happened, but I know you was uh happy for Odell when he came in and played that bowl game as the interim and um you know I think he had the heartbeat of the kids but you know you in your heart everybody knew he they weren't gonna hire the older brother that's been there. Oh, no. And and uh I know you went off on a, a rage about Willie. What are you happy with the with the Norvell hire? I know Norvell pretty well. Well I mean I'm 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 happy because it's something new. I'm happy just listening to him listening to him talk about uh you know what you know, I, I, and why, really, watching his, his approach mm-hmm. is just different. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy about that. Um, when when you think about, uh, for me, um, yeah, I mean, we won that. I tell people all the time, we won national championship in 2013. No doubt. It's only 2000. I mean, right now, 2019 right now. Yeah. So, and we went to the playoffs in the first playoffs in 2014. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I think people don't realize that they weren't too far off. Yeah. And then to fall off, to fall off like we did, I think it just, it pissed me off. So I don't know enough about Norvell to say, yeah. to, to co-sign and say, you know what, I love this on the air, this is blah, blah, blah. No I don't know enough about him to say to say that. But what I do know enough about, I, I, know, I know that to me, He's a worker. To me, I, we're yeah. watching him work. We're watching him continue to do his thing. You know what I mean? And and you saw what he did in Memphis. Yeah. So you know, for me, it's, it's I, I'm okay with this as, as long as as long as he continues to get everybody better. Yeah. As long as he moves the needle. You know what I mean? And yeah. and my and and not just that. I love you know everybody's like oh he took hoodies down at all man that's bullshit blah blah blah. And I'm sitting thinking like dude read in between the lines. Yeah. This has nothing to do with hoodies. Yeah. It has nothing to do with earrings. This all it has to do is will you buy in? Yeah. If you won't, we can find some other dude to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's my biggest thing is we got to establish discipline back at Florida State. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't like Willie Taggart before I even knew what type of coach he was. I didn't like all the dancing and bullshit at practice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, practice is supposed to be 
go out there, bust your ass for two and a half hours, yep. be tired of shit, barely can do your homework, yep. and then do it all over again the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like this, like nothing, nothing about college football is fun. Should be easy. When you lose, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell no, I think it's not easy. <laughs> and it should like, never be. Ha- it like, should well, never be fun, really, until you win it all. No, I, I mean, mean it, you know, it, it, it's, fun, it's fun when you're winning. No doubt. When you win, you grind. I'm gonna tell you, the fun of the game is when you're winning and you're grinding with your brothers. Yeah, yeah. You're grinding every day, and you can tell stories every day, back and forth about what happened. I mean, we still tell stories to this day mm-hmm. about stuff that happened in practice, yep. about us getting our ass whooped by the coaches. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We still have stories to this day about when Buster Davis decided he was going to transfer and, didn't, and couldn't and couldn't get his release but missed three days of practice. And Joe Kynes and Mickey Andrews made him push the two-by-four while pulling the sled <laughs> 100 yards for every play or every rep that he missed in practice. For them days he was gone. Yeah, it's the, it's the and we, I mean, and we laugh about it. We laugh about it. We laugh about when Ryan Casey come in uh, to the dorm room in the middle of the night, two hours past curfew, and Odell is sitting in his room in the dark and tell him, "Uh, uh-uh, son, <laughs> keep the clothes on. You look nice." Oh, and, yeah. t- and took his ass and ran out to the field and made and made them a uh, barrel roll. Uh, two thousand yards, uh, a thousand yards for every hour he was gone. Oh, damn! Before training camp, before training camp practice. Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we we laugh about those things. Like, man, you remember when this happened? Like, you know what I mean? like that's something fun. Everything that they don't like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, I remember that it was a good time. But guess what? I also remember in practice. Practice is the hardest thing ever. So games is easy. Yeah, yeah. So practice should be that me, hard. That to me is what I didn't like really about. Huh? Yeah, no doubt, practices always should be harder than the game, man. That's you know that <laughs> that's a, that's a Kobe quote actually, and that's uh, something I live by as a coach, man. I mean, like shit. You know, practice is easier than the game. You're going to get your ass whooped. I mean, it's just straight what it is. Exactly. And, you know, you guys had so much talent. Even your red shirt guys were probably so talented it gave you at least a decent look. That's how I had it at Indy. And all those kids that didn't even play for me ended up still going power five because we were so talented. Um, and then, you know, shit, you know, uh, talent breeds fucking competition, man. And, uh and, uh, and y'all won another championship, didn't you? Nah, we won. Uh, we won it all. We finished third, man. We won it. We won our conference. We won the the, sec- the second rated bowl game. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Who, so. who won that championship? Uh, East. Yep. Oklahoma. Yep. East. East or Oklahoma. Yep. Yeah. East. So, so we should have never lost that game. We lost, but uh, you know, that's just it was those cameras, man. We had to get adjusted, and then last year, obviously. Yeah. It was a bad nucleus. Everybody wanted to be on the fucking camera, so um, it was just. Oh uh, yeah, everybody, everybody wanted to be on the camera. Yeah, bro. You know, it's, it's, it's I said one time, I said, man, yeah, that, that, that thing is all fine and dandy, but it still don't the way you got to be on TV. Yeah, man. If you can't be that way, it ain't even fine. But all you gonna do is lose money, because like, like you said on the intro, you can be the highest guys ever live, and it's always one you always be interviewed by one of those kids that are talented. From all the seasons of our country, and you're like, oh man, why didn't this kid give me opportunities? Because we look like a dick on such a TV. And all of a sudden, everybody was like, I'm going to deal with that. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that's one of the things with, with kids, and you got to keep the feet in mind, like, yo, you're always being watched, dude. There's no time you're not being watched. And when it comes time to go to the league, guess what? All the things that you've done from the time that I got to the league, the NFL security team called. Literally, my elementary school teacher from Kansas Elementary School on oh. Chris on on seventy second and third song, right there down the street from the rally. Call my principal. Call every teacher. I had. Yep. I was a kid. How was he as a kid? How was he here? The couple girlfriends that I had, I don't know how they phone numbers. The girlfriends called me. Hey man, the NFL called me about you. <laughs> like <laughs> what? Yep. So you are always being lost, man. Always. Hey Trav, you got a uh, you on speaker or on your regular phone? It's kind of cutting. Uh, it's oh, no, I'm on my re- I'm on my regular phone. Okay. Man, I'm away from my no, it's kind of muffy. Is all. It started getting muffy a little bit. It's cool. You hear? Yeah, my bad. I had, it, I had it away from my face. Oh, now you good? <laughs> now, nah, yeah, I try to tell people that too, man. Uh, recapping what you said. You know, I'm at Indy. I'm probably going to have ten to twelve kids get drafted next year from the two shows, the two seasons of the show, and. 
I've had NFL security call me, man, multiple times um, asking me about all my players, man. And they, they, they call in my um, – their high school and their middle school shit, their junior high. They 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 go back yeah. man, and they'll call your baby mamas and your girls and everybody else. You better <laughs> no, all the time. Every, every day time. is an interview. Shit. <clears throat> People don't realize, man, how important that shit is. But yeah, I'm with you, man. You know, I know Norvell well and you know, Memphis obviously has done a good job there at a group of five school, probably turned it around and um <clears throat> you know, I I'm I know the O. C. he hired, uh, a good friend of mine also. So, I mean, we'll see. He's a young cat, youngest OC in D1. I think he's 29, but. Um, it, yeah, yeah, you know, he's uh, 30, 38. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. The OC is only 29 that he hired. Oh, the OC is only 29. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Coach, yeah, Coach Dellingham. He's a good dude. Arizona State. Yeah, he was with him at Arizona State when, they were, when he was OC. So, um, okay. But, you know, the one part about it is. It's a young man's game now, and let's be honest about it. And people don't realize, man, these these old white haired cats going into these rooms and they're taking these jobs over. These young brothers are looking at them like, oh, another one of these motherfuckers is talking through their fucking yeah. mouth. And uh, <clears throat> at least Norvell and his staff are younger. Uh, you still got Odell there to bring that uh, bring that OG, you know, uh, mentality. And then you got these young cats that'll have the heartbeat of the team, in my opinion. But but we're going to see, man. I mean, you know, shit. You better win, man. That's just what it comes down to. It's results-oriented business. Oh, yeah, no you, question. You either win or no you question. lose. It ain't no gray area in this game. So, um, yeah, it, no, not at all. And I, and I think he's going to be all right. Yeah. I, I think he knows he has talent, but I think he knows he didn't come in here like Willie and say, oh, man, we're going to win right away. Yeah. Like, we come here like, dude, nah, we got to get the culture right, bro. <laughs> like, we got to. Yeah. That's what's first. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't. Start from the like, ground up. Start from the ground up, teaching the basics, man. You got who to get and how to get them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tech, uh, uh, freaking alignment, assignment, technique, and effort. That's yeah, all. Yeah, that's yeah. all you need to teach, and everything else will fall in place. A A A T A A N T. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, so is it time to start yeah. weeding out the uh, the older cats? I mean, just as far as not not. No, with, I mean, not it's not the older. You know, not only that knowledge, I mean, just as far as relating to these new fucking era type dudes, man. These these Instagram. You know, these young 20-year-old cat Instagram well, I, dudes, well, I, 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 Enable I think, group. I think, I think yes and no. I think yes and no. There's some coaches that don't adjust. And some coaches don't need to adjust. Mm-hmm. You know, I got a guy like Nick Saban. I would have said Nick Saban still call that thing face face. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he don't know what it's called. <laughs> but at the same time, but at the same time, you know, he relates to kids because he knows, hey, listen, these kids want to win. That's mm-hmm. why he recruits the way he recruits. Is it ain't it ain't just uh you know someone's gonna be dancing in practice. Nick Saban ain't gonna have music on the practice. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nick Saban ain't gonna be uh you know yeah yeah he gonna he gonna get you there. That's he's a recruiter. Mm-hmm. You know and, that, and that's the thing is, is with so many coaches you can go and think oh I could be a great recruiter but yeah if you can't coach you can't develop you ain't shit to me. Right. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? If I if, if I can't. If I can't depend on you to get me to the next level, give me where I want to come to school. Yeah. Give me where I want to go. I want to go to the league. I don't want to be a, uh, I don't be a, a professional student. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to the league. Period. And I need you to figure out how to get me there. Hell yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the big, that's the, that's the difference between Dabo, Nick, uh, you know, Pete Carroll when he was there, Bobby Bowden with you. I mean, those guys got kids at the next level. They taught them. They coached them. You know, Reggie Bush came out and was like, shit, SC ain't been taught or coached since Pete Carroll left, man. I mean, that's just what it is. And uh, yeah, exactly. they're not, they're not and being developed. They're allowed to coach older leagues because they're tired. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 What, so look, man, there's this thing going around, man. I know, I know, you know. I got, I, 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 I left, man, and uh, I left Indy over a controversial statement I made to a kid. And there's a coach out there, man. Pat McAfee had it on his show today. Grand Valley State OC. Um, I just gotta let the world know, man. White fucking privilege is real, and I'm <laughs> saying that shit because I'm from Compton, and motherfuckers know me and know what I'm about. I say the word Hitler. In re- in reference to I'm fucking your ne- your daddy right now because you're a fuck up, and I basically get fired. This motherfucker says he wants to be Hitler and wants to learn how he great of a leader he was as the OC at a college, and this motherfucker gets suspended and reprimanded. <laughs> like 
<laughs> what part of the game is that? So I think I'm going to go on uh, Pat McAfee, yeah. man, and discuss this shit. But, like, that shit to me is like, wait up. Well, let's compare resumes, first of all. He ain't fucking can't touch my dick with a fucking six-foot pole. Number one. Number What's two. It's in Cali? No, nah, it's Grand Valley State. It's yeah. a powerhouse D2. In, in, in Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Michigan. Okay, okay. So it's a Division two school, and uh, he goes out there, and he says these things. He's like, you know. And then the other people that he referenced was like fucking Christopher Columbus <laughs> and like some other motherfucker, no white dude, man. It's like. This motherfucker, man, you know where his mentals is right from the gate. And and yeah. he, then he goes out and says that shit. And it's like, hold up now. Uh, and then, you know, then, you know, you had the whole Missouri State hires Petrino, damn near hired Art Bryles after the whole debacle at Baylor. Like, motherfuckers don't realize, yeah, man. Do. You know what I'm saying? People don't realize, man, like, you better stop judging every single motherfucker before you really learn the story because these old cats are just re- just recycling the same old motherfuckers. Oh, they recycling all of them. Shit. I mean, Petrino got his ass whooped for fucking the fucking the girl who worked for him, and then the damn whole <laughs> weight room staff whooped his ass, and they tried to cover it up and say he fell off, fell the, off damn the bike. Motorbike. Yeah, yeah, that ain't, that ain't never happened. You know what I'm saying? But you know, and he he back now. Uh, he back now. Not only is that he, he, he took he took a job that could have been a brother's job, or who knows who could have been. But he hires his own son as the OC. Now, now, man. is there no thing as nepotism now? I mean, it's, nepotism, it's man. Fucker, it's only, man. It's only schools on care. Dog, yeah. this shit is crazy, man. But you're going to continue to bash me. And, and I don't give a fuck. You can bash me all you want. But people are like, I'm just like, hold up, man. You know, let's call a square a square and a circle a circle. Or at least let's be uh, even down the pipe with the shit and, 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 and be fair about it on all chords. Don't just be one way and the other. And the same motherfuckers that hire him are the ones that hate me. You know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. Like you ain't never helped exactly. no fucking black kid. Well, they, 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 they hate, they hate you because you, because you love, you love black folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. And like we talked about before, man, <laughs> it, it ain't ever the brother that's the, the one that has the issue. It's always the other motherfucker that with my skin tone. So it, it, it's, it's crazy, man. How shit works out. Uh, shit, I don't know. So what's up, man? You at CBS now? Well, I do CBS Radio, man. Yeah, I've been I've been with CBS for a minute, man. CBS Radio. I left them for a little bit. Went over to ninety seven. Went over to ESPN Radio, and then it came on back, man. You know, so yeah. Right now, hopefully, uh, I got hopefully I got some broom with another little joint out here. Okay. You know, uh, for the right for the right check, but you yeah, know, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, man. For the chicken, uh, yeah, the right, the right, the right chicken. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, chicken. I hope he's that, hope he's that Popeye chicken sandwich. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, otherwise, man, otherwise I've been good, man. I can't. I'm really, you know, I just do that stuff, man. Just, to, just to be out there, yeah, stay relevant. And try to keep my brain, yeah. and try to keep my brain moving, moving, yeah. And keep my brand moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just, uh. You know, just really, that's about it, man. I, yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a full-time dad, bro. No you know what I mean? No doubt. Matter of fact, kids going to get off the bus in a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I had Marcellus on, and he was he, he told me to tell you what's up, uh, Marcellus White. Tell him but what's he, he was like uh, he was talking about the same thing, man. He said he goes and gets he goes and sees mental health doctors, man, just to have his brain yeah. looked at and shit, and just stays apart All the time. on top of it. Yeah, man. So look, I, man. I, 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 mean, I see shrink. I see shrink every week, man. I see shrink every right? week. Damn. Yeah, every That's week. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. Because yeah. I mean, it's. I know it's too. I mean, we off, man. All of us off oh, just a little bit. No, no. I mean, we ain't got to play the game. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, shit. I, I just wanna, like. I just like to know. You I know? don't. No doubt. I don't want to have an Aaron Hernandez sad, sad ass situation or or one of them where you know his brain, him and Junior, nothing. Fuck. They said their brains were something of somebody that exactly. had that shit for thirty years. You know, uh, that motherfucker was twenty eight. And, and I know, and I know, I got it because I know, I know, the, I know the, the symptoms, but. Yeah. I can try to keep it in check as much as possible. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Shit, much love. Hey, man, so I, I know you uh, you got to go get your kids. I appreciate you coming on, man. Let, well, let everybody know, man, what's your favorite cigar, man? Because, you know, we all oh, got them. Oh, man. I know you posted, uh, I know you posted a deal the other day. Walter Jones responded because I hit him up. I said, man, you don't know about that Regis cigar. I've been smoking these Regis's. They're good as hell, man. You got to try one. Yeah. But, uh. I, I gotta check it out. Yeah, what you like? You know, I've been uh, you know, every day is you know, me and Walt, me and Big Walt, you know, what I mean, full speed connect. Yeah, but uh, you know, we in a little, we in a little cigar chat with Henry Reed, with Dave McJohn, yeah, with, uh, Nick Van Exel, all of us. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's that's a pretty solid chat. 
Yeah. You know, uh, I don't have any overall favorites. You know, it, it, I mean, it's easy to pick an open snack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They say, oh, this is my favorite. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Right. Like, but, like, today I had, uh, I had, I had a Matt Sherman uh, Pan America today. Oh, okay. Which was, I mean, it's a, 90, it's a 92 rated cigar, man. It's a pretty, it was pretty solid this morning. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it just, but my favorite is whatever I'm smoking at the time. You know, I'm That's always, kids. it's like kids, man. <laughs> you know, I'm always, I, I'm always smoking butter. So, every, I don't, you know, I tell people that I don't smoke bullshit. You yeah, know what I mean? Me too. You know, me some too. people just smoke, say, oh, yep, I smoke I'm smoking. Cigars, yeah, he can't do that shit, man. I'm always, I'm, I'm mm. always smoking good shit, man. If I'm going to die doing this, yeah. I'm going to do it the best <laughs> of my ability. Hell yeah, I'm going to go all out. Both feet, I'm all, both feet in type of cat. <laughs> yeah, I ain't I'm got no one foot for in. Hey, all gas, it no brakes. So, so you don't, so you don't order yours online, huh? Hell no, nah, that's it's a joke. Well, I mean, it's some, it's something, it's something to get ordered in. You know, depending on what they are. You know, like uh, like uh, this year's cigar of the year, the uh, aging room, the uh, aging room part yeah. um, yep. from cigar of the year. Like I couldn't find it nowhere, so I ordered the box online. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah, you know, it just it, it, uh, it depends on what they are. You know, sometimes you know I got. You know, sometimes I call around the country to retailers, whoever I know is authorized retailers, and somebody buy it from there. Yeah. Or sometimes you got a good online source. Yeah. And you got to get it from that from that place. Yeah, no doubt. This, this cat, this cat, get on me about uh, get my shit online, man. Man, he, they, he, they, he get they, mad at me when I buy yeah, it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, man, hey, listen. A lot of them come off yeah, fucked you, up, you, dried out and shit. No, nah, man, it depends on what you order. I know. I give you, I give I, you a web, I give you a website, man. Call, yeah, let call me, me know. later. Yeah, I will. I give you a website. We can order, it, and they are they everything looks good. Everything's phenomenal. Oh, for at sure. A fraction of the cost. For sure. Oh, for okay, sure. good. I'm gonna hit you up after this. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, man, much love, brother. Much continued success. All right, man. I'm and, uh, proud, brother. I know you're going to go get your babies. No doubt, brother. You too. All right, All right JB. All right, All right, All right, right now. Peace. Brother Travis, huh? <laughs> yeah, Trap, man. Good dude, man. He, uh, he represented. He came up and did a pancake breakfast for me at the high school when I was coaching at Cabrillo. And he's always been a straight-up real dude. And everybody in the league and everybody coaching and on the, on the show, on the radio or on TV always knows uh, Trap is always going to be a real cat and represent. So uh, much love to uh Travis Johnson, man, and uh, lessons to you know, which is with his family, yeah, daughter, man, you know. know, he's a girl dad, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to L. Duncan and uh, ESPN announcer uh, that uh, gave that shout out to Kobe, man. And you can't look anywhere without seeing a Kobe. Uh, you know, I landed last night back in LAX, and uh, you know they got downtown lit up with twenty four purple and gold every building, yeah. man. It's unbelievable, and. Even out here where I'm at, man, they had the, man, the city. Everywhere you city drive, light. Yeah, everywhere you drive, man. You got, the cats the house has got this jersey hanging yeah, up outside. Yeah. Uh, nailed up yeah. on the garage yeah. and shit. Used like, car dealers. Our car everything. dealerships have their... Uh, the shit on the on the on the name on the on the deal, man. And yeah. the marquees, you know, him and his daughter holding his daughter, man. And you know, there's you know, I hate to do. I don't. Want, I'm never gonna break no fake shit or fake news shit. But um, you know, they're saying that uh, you know they were found uh, her, next to each other, and and uh, she was actually in his in near or in his arms, man. So um, you know, uh, so you know, it's it's a sad situation, man. But. But, uh, man, shout out to Trav coming on, man. And, uh, hey, this is, uh, this has been another good episode, man. And, uh, another slap dick show. Another slap dick show, fucking dog. Yeah. And, uh, Stogie fucking everything up. And, uh, even the little fucking dog. Uh, Hey, man, before before we, uh, this. Shit, we're off. We're off the mic. I'm gonna pull it out. Still on this one though. Yeah. Can I plug this in? Uh. Nah, we don't need that. I mean, right here. Which one? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Well. Guess that's how we're going to end that one over. What's cracking? Hey, it's real shit. <laughs> hey, shit happens, man. It's real shit. But, man, getting back to the show, uh, having Travis on, man, representing, man, you know, uh, I'm going to clear the airways, man. You know, I, I, I'm dealing with some shit. Everybody knows, and one of the people want to talk shit and all that, but nobody really knows the truth. I know all I can tell you is uh, I know the truth. So this is the thing, though. A cat references Hitler at a Division II school, and is reprimanded or slapped on the hand and his resume can't fucking hold my nutsack and yet uh and he hasn't helped anyone like i have and you can see what the fuck his mentals is about but you know i say something and trying to help the kid who 
everybody knows the true context of that message that I sent out and, um, you know, I get thrown under the bus. It's just what it is, man, because people don't like, like Travis said, most of the majority of the kids I help are inner city young brothers, mm -hmm. black kids that need a cat to be hard on them, give them the real so I can get them to where they could not get them fucking selves. And that's the definition of coaching, and people don't realize that. And uh, it's unfortunate, man. But it is what it is because got to keep it pushing. And uh, I got to run the day. I don't let the day run me or I'll be fucked and buried or in jail somewhere. So everybody keep your head high. Every day's an interview. Understand that. And uh, it's been a good show besides Stogie fucking me. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Sunday will be a Super Bowl Sunday. We'll have another show. Yes, on uh, The next show we'll have is going to be live on Super Bowl Sunday. Tune uh, in. At my house. In. Netflix will be here filming it. Um, I'm going to have quite a few people over. We're going to have a little Super Bowl event. We're going to do a three-part podcast with different guests coming on live. Um, that should be fun. It'll be a good, a good deal. We're going to do a pre. Gonna have all. A lot of drinking. A lot of barbecuing. <laughs> I'm a grill. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> you guys... Uh, just fun, stay tuned. Man. It'll be a live show. Pre-game, halftime, and post-game. Man, I, <coughs> sorry. What? You got a... I was reading this shit on Reddit. You be checking out Reddit? Nah, they bashed me, so I don't... Really? Them. Yeah. I was reading some shit. I said, Chinese authorities seized 12 tons of beaver penises smuggled from Canada. <clears throat> really? So, all right, 12 tons of beaver penises. Who the fuck out there... It's who, taking the who in there catching the beavers and then taking the, the dicks off. Was it wait up? So we're were, were, were girls involved? Chinese authorities seized twelve tons of beaver penises, homie. Like it's fucking cocaine. Like they'll Chapo brought in the penises and shit. So for for uh, it's for uh, uh, ED. Really? Yeah. That's what it's for? Yes, for what? ED, dog. For erectile dysfunction. So beaver penis, you eat it, yeah, you get a heart on? Get, yeah, get your you shit right. Shit. I mean, really? how, big, how big is beaver penis? Shit, probably bigger than yours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you, if that, I don't know. It, it, it depends if you use Manscaped or not. Um, if you use Manscaped, it may be... Um, you can see your shit, yeah. and it may look like a beaver penis. <laughs> I don't know what you got uh, cracking, but uh, if you did, if you still had the Chia Pet without Manscaped 3.0, yeah, uh, I would say the beaver penis was probably probably got you. Damn, I don't know. I gotta see. I gotta uh, see. You gotta peep it out. I'm sure you need to really probably look at that. The uh, horse. The horse might have me. Yeah, might, horse, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Close. You know, race. Yeah. Kind of like Keyshawn and, uh, yeah, and Wiley. Yeah. Close yeah. race. If we deal with the horse, you know. It'd be a battle. Yeah. yeah. Dealing, dealing with a monster. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it'd be a battle. I don't know. Beaver penis, dog. Beaver penis. I got I to gotta look that up. I don't understand. You eat it straight out? Or? I think you cook the shit up. Oh, you it. cook it? You drink it? Probably cook the shit, dog. <laughs> and eat it or drink it? Yeah, you chop it up like, I don't know. You fry it up? Or what's oh, the better to keep the flavors in it? Uh, what? It raw? Eat it raw? I raw know, it's, raw it's, beaver penis? Is the motherfucker like tofu or something? Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, Chinese on some other uh, shit. Man, I don't know, man. But I, all I know is, man, our, this episode of Slap Dick Podcast is brought to you by my bookie. Uh, if you enjoy football and have a heartbeat, then you know what's coming. The Super Bowl. Want to make a bet on it? Head over to mybookie.ag to make your predictions a reality. Whether you're choosing the winner or making a side bet with a friend, my bookie offers you the most up-to-date odds and a site that makes extra cash easy and fast. You can even visit mybookie.ag slash party to access a printable prop sheet for the big game. Football not your jam? No worries. My bookie's got it all from the NBA to the Premier League. If you join right now, my bookie will match your deposit halfway all the way up to $1,000. That means if you deposit $2,000, you will get an extra $1,000 in free money to play with. Go check out my bookie. All you have to do is use promo code BLV, Bravo Larry Victor, to activate the offer. Once again, that's promo code BLV to get your extra cash from my bookie. Play, win, and get paid. Go peep it out. Go peep it out, fellas and uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's been a great show, man. And uh, yes, we'll yeah. see you live Sunday. Stay tuned. The shows are going to get better and better as they are. We've having some big time guests on and Travis Johnson, Trap, 
I appreciate him coming on and uh, giving some real insight to real shit and uh, and uh, Stogie fucking up the show and and uh, that's what it is because it's a slapdick <laughs> podcast. So for the real coach JB, my main man Spree, check us out. Follow us on YouTube and social media and uh, go to our website coachjbstore.com. Get you a book. Take me now. Love me later. Get you a slapdick hoodie. Yeah. Or get you some gear. I got um, some music coming out too. By the way, check out the site. I'm gonna start posting some shit for my music, man. Yeah, it's uploading the shit. Up. Yeah, I'm gonna start singing my own shit. I'm gonna be yeah. a pop star. Yeah, so I, don't I, will wanna, I don't wanna hear him singing, man. But, it, man. Uh, we'll see. So tune into that, man. If you want tune into that. If you want to see some comedy, let me know. Yeah, beep that out. It might be comedy, uh, comedic or whatever, but <laughs> comedy. Maybe is it? Do they got a comedy genre rap? Uh, hey, we well, have, hey, fuck uh, it. If not, we are gonna create that lane. We'll create it, and uh, you know, hey, every day's an interview. For the real coach JB, this is Spree and Stogie. Being a fuck stick, we're just that we're just slap dicks. Out of here. <laughs> Out of here, peace. Hope this ain't my last chance. It's the last chance. For me, will I make it? Will I take it to the top? We gon' see. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. Will I make it? Will I take it to the top? We gon' see. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. It's the last chance for you. Last chance for me. Man.